we can choose to read, write, or turn automation off by accessing the automation mode selector, which is located right here. You'll see there are numerous um, types of automation that we can select from. The ones we're going to discuss in this class are off, read, and write. So if you're in write mode, Pro Tools writes every move that you make with the fader, uh, pan knob, etc. You can select which parameters you want to automate by going to the automation window. That automation window is found up here under the window drop down menu, automation. You can see in this window that right now we are only selected to write volume. So if we want to choose to write any of these other parameters, we have to select them and turn them on. Now we'll be able to read and write volume, pan, and mute aut automation. Uh, these buttons over here are for the send volume, send pan, and send mute. So all of those might be available if you have them selected. Let's say, for example, that we want to automate this bass part right here. First thing we need to do is place this, the bass track in the write mode, and then open up our automation window, and make sure that the elements that we want to automate are turned on or write enabled. In this case, we're just going to automate the volume and maybe the pan, so we'll turn those two items on. Now, we can actually play our recording, and as we do that, any of the fader or pan moves that we make will be written to the bass track. So if we want to read, then, what we have just written, we place Pro Tools back into the automation read mode and play our piece again. You can see it's reading those automation moves that we made to the volume as well as the pan. If you don't take Pro Tools out of the write mode, then uh, next time you go back to the beginning and play, it's going to write over what you just automated. So once in write mode, it's always writing. So let me undo that. And we'll place this back in to read mode. So we can go and look at both the pan automation that we have created, as well as selecting and looking at the volume automation that we have also created. Each Pro Tools track contains a single automation playlist for each automatable parameter. If we want to view the automation that we have just written, we can click on the Track View Selector and go down and view Volume. And as soon as you do that, you can see the automation that we have written that happened to be volume information. We could also click on the Track View Selector and select Pan because we also wrote some Pan information. You can also view the automation data by clicking on the Show Hide Automation Lanes Disclosure Triangle. So we could place our Track View Selector on the playlist and look at the volume or the pan automation that we've written. Or we could click this plus button and we could view both tracks of automation data. It's also easy to add or edit the breakpoints in your automation data. A breakpoint is each of these individual points that has been added to your automation playlist. You can do that by clicking with the grabber tool and just moving it. You can also delete a breakpoint by using the option modifier key and that will turn that uh, grabber tool essentially into an eraser. So I'm erasing some of these by just option clicking on the particular breakpoint that I want to delete. You can also add breakpoints by using the grabber tool and just clicking and adding a breakpoint. We've talked about the write mode and the read mode. Off mode basically turns all automation off. So if we go over here and we look at the automation modes, when we select off using the automation mode selector, Pro Tools will not read any of the automation data. It's still there, but it just doesn't read 
any of the data because automation has been turned off. Back in lesson one, we talked a little bit about real-time plugins and what they were. Real-time plugins process the plugin data in real time. There's also file-based processing, which is non-real-time, and that's provided through the Audio Suite plugins, which we'll discuss in the second Pro Tools course, Pro Tools 110. There are two types of real-time plugins. There are DSP-based plugins, which are used by Pro Tools HD or HDX hardware systems. And then there are native plugins that can be used by all Pro Tools systems. If you're running Pro Tools natively on your Mac or PC, you will only be able to use the real-time native plugins. And if you have an HD or an HDX system, you'll be able to use the DSP-based plugins which will allow you to process the data internally on your uh, Pro Tools HD or HDX card. There are also a couple of different formats, three specifically, um, of plug-in types. So when you go to add an insert to a track, you'll see there's multi-channel and multi-mono. A multi-mono plug-in uh, can be used on stereo tracks or on surround tracks. Multi-mono plugins analyze and process each channel, the left and right channel, independently. The controls for both channels are linked by default so that the adjustments are made to channels uh, in tandem. You can also unlink these if you would like to have uh, different controls or parameters set for both your left and right channels in a stereo plugin. Multi-channel plugin treats both tracks the exact same way and are always linked together. The third type is just a mono plugin, and this uh, is designed to be used strictly on a mono track. So, mono plugins, multi mono plugins, and then a multi channel plugin which controls uh, both channels and treats them identically. There are a number of plugin types that come with Pro Tools, and we're going to talk about some of those right now. Pro Tools comes standard with uh, three different plugins we're going to talk about. EQ3, Dynamics 3, and the Channel Strip. EQ3 is an equalizer plugin. So if we decide we want to add a little bit of EQ to one of our channels, we can do that. We could go up here and select an open insert and go to Plugin and go to EQ and we'll find EQ3. Now there are a variety of bands of EQ3 that are available. There's a one band or a seven band. So if we choose a one band EQ, you'll see that that opens up here, and then we can adjust our EQ parameters. Okay, but it only has one point that we can adjust. We could also choose EQ3 seven band, and that gives us more bands that we can play with. So we can EQ our particular audio signal however we like. If we choose to add EQ3 on a stereo track, you'll have the option to use either a multi-mono plugin or a multi-channel plugin. If you use a multi-channel plugin, then everything you do by adjusting the EQ will affect both channels the same. However, if you choose a multi-mono plugin, then you could set each particular channel, the left and right channel, differently. Here it shows you left and right, but it also is showing you that they are linked. So you could unlink these and say, select the left channel to have an EQ like that, and the right channel to have an EQ like that. And so each channel is being treated differently. That's because it's a multi-mono plugin versus a multi-channel plugin. The Dynamics 3 plugin is a multi-purpose compressor limiter de -esser. You can find it here, Dynamics 3 compressor limiter. And it works like many compressors. You can adjust many of the different parameters however you like to get the sound that you're looking for.
You'll learn more about some of the individual functions in other courses, but this is one of the plugins that's supplied and comes with every version of Pro Tools. The last plugin type I wanted to discuss, and it's called the Channel Strip. It's a multi purpose plugin, has both an EQ section, a filter section, a dynamic section. So expansion, compression, side chaining, quite a nice multi-purpose plugin. So everything available in one particular plugin and it replicates a traditional channel strip of an analog console. Again, you could add this to a stereo track as either a multi-channel plugin or as a multi-mono plugin. And then uh, with the link button disengaged, you can set the left and right side individually. Okay, that's it for this uh, video. I hope you'll take the time to uh, experiment with these plugins, EQ3, Dynamics 3, and the Channel Strip, that you'll find these useful in helping you to mix your first project.